Scotland has long endeavoured to pursue independence from the United Kingdom. These attempts can all be traced back to the union with England in 1707. So they didn't want it and they still don't really want it. Well, why did it happen at all? Welcome to Chit Chat History. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the Darien Scheme, a little known attempt by Scotland to try out England's new hobby, colonisation. However, spoiler alert, it was a massive failure and led the nation into a delicate situation, necessitating its subjection into union with England. The Darien Scheme was launched in the late 17th century as a Scottish attempt to create an outpost for trading in the New World. The hope was to establish themselves as players in the global stage of European powers dominating in the New World colonisation schemes and trade networks. One major condition that led Scotland into this situation was primarily over resentment over the English. The union of the crowns in 1606 under the rule of James VI of Scotland and the First of England had thrust the two nations into an uncertain and unequal unity. Though two separate parliaments still ruled over each nation, it was the English interests which dominated the concerns of the king and actions of the government. This scheme really was an attempt to assert Scotland's own independence and interests, apart from the English. England's domination of trade and success in colonisation during this time was clear. New powers had been awarded to the East India Company, an English company, in 1693, to allow them to heavily regulate and control other private traders operating in their networks many of whom were Scottish merchant ships looking for access. With the creation of an act passed by Scottish Parliament to create the Company of Scotland in 1695, giving the company a monopoly over Scottish trade and the ability to find and settle new territories. One provision of this act stated, if any of the persons or efforts of the company should be seized or damaged, the king agreed to have restitution made at the public charge, a statement that bolstered the company's concerns about insurance for the venture and laid claim to a promise of protection from the king himself, who was King William III. Unfortunately, as they would soon discover, this was not evidently the case, and I'll come back to that later. Support for the Darien scheme was high, as were the hopes of what it may mean for Scotland. Ambition was a large factor endorsing the scheme itself. William Patterson, a Scottish merchant, credited with proposing the establishment of a colony at Darien, stated that he believed this opportunity gave Scotland the door of the seas and the key of the universe. We still have the list of subscribers to this venture in 1695. Subscribers are people who bought into the scheme, almost like buying stocks in Apple or loaning your friend money to start up a business, with hopes that it will make you more money in the future. It is clear when examining the subscribers that there was a large support for the company, from the sheer amount pledged and from the variety of people. The funds came to over £400,000, or £43 million today from around 1,500 Scots. Now that might not seem like a lot, but keep in mind that in the 1690s was a devastating period in Scotland, as the population was plagued with famine, crop loss and economic strain. The variety of subscribers also demonstrates the strong backing of public interest in the venture. Not only merchants and tradesmen invested their wealth into the scheme, but also women, craftsmen and shopkeepers. So this was an impressive amount and backing from the people of Scotland, who probably didn't have that much money to spare. Many of these investors also indicated high hopes on their money, attributing their winnings to go to children or family members when the company would eventually pay out. Such hopes and high endorsement can give a picture of how much expectation the Scottish placed in this extremely ill-fated scheme. And again, this can only help envisage what might have been felt after the news broke of its failure. Now, the plan was in place and the company directors were confident of a guaranteed success. Five ships set off in 1695. 
the St. Andrew, the Caledonia, the Unicorn, the Dolphin and the Endeavour. They took around 1,200 people in total, with the aim of creating a new colony. So they took a variety of people, farmers, builders, women and soldiers. They aimed for the Isthmus of Darien, or today's Bay of Panama. After landing, they called the new land Caledonia, and their new town, New Edinburgh. They dug a ditch and constructed Fort St Andrew, which had 50 cannons. They began building huts as homes close to the protection of the fort, and began clearing land for farming. However, they soon ran into some major concerns. Agriculture in the New World had a large learning curve, and the new colonists didn't really think that they had to plant that many crops. They hoped that they could instead rely on trade, however the native inhabitants and passing trade merchants never really wanted anything they had to offer. And on top of this, the local native inhabitants were unwilling to help those newcomers as they were already hostile with the Spanish invaders. They also realised that their food supply was not well sealed and much of the supplies that they had brought over to last them through the winter had rotted. The only stuff not rotten was the alcohol, for which they had plenty, and this only quickened the death of those already suffering with dysentery and starvation. Next was illness. Malaria spread quite quickly throughout the colonists within the first year, and death rates at the highest hit more than 10 people per day. This ravaging famine and illness devastated settler numbers, causing exhaustion and panic. Worst of all, the Scots had settled in Spanish territory. The constitution of New Caledonia, created by the company in 1698, had particular requirements for the establishment and organisation of the colony. It stated clearly that no settlement was to be created where Europeans had already settled. However, they didn't really seem to care that their location that they picked was the centre of Spanish territory. That's right, Scotland found itself smack bang in the middle of Spanish territory. The new colony encountered several small skirmishes, attacks on their trading attempts, and were straight up threatening to attack and destroy the new colony. Many colonists remained living on the boat for the whole time that they were there, just because the new town didn't really offer the same kind of protection that they had on the ship. Another major deterrent for the Scottish was King William's sudden retraction of his support for the venture. In his intentions to keep the peace with Spain at the time, it would be problematic to show encouragement for the venture which threatened Spain's economic and military control over South America. Even as their monarch, William reprimanded the endeavour and criticised the Scots for taking on the foolish attempt. In January of 1699, King William of England and Scotland sent out notification to all English merchants warning them not to support or provide assistance to the Darien colony or its settlers. He said that he had no knowledge or approval of Scottish design. This was a devastating realisation for the Scottish company. Many scholars believe it was this understanding of isolation without backing from the crown in addition to the ongoing threatening Spanish attacks, which made the decisive influence over their decision to abandon the venture altogether. And so they did, abandoning the colony July 1699, just eight months after they had arrived. They sailed home to Scotland with the bad news. Only one boat made it back to Scotland, with just 300 people, out of the original 1,200 intended settlers. But this adventure didn't end there. In 1699, a new set of three ships, filled with provisions, set sail for the new colony, tragically having left only a few days after news came that the colony had actually been abandoned. The reinforcement fleet arrived to find no one to greet them, and from accounts, the new arrivals found the fort and the town abandoned and already overgrown, with little for the new settlers to utilise. Thomas Drummond, captain of the second expedition, wrote of his concerns. He had not come to settle a colony, but to reinforce a new one. They had come to provide provisions, not to start anew. 
but support what should have been already set up as a self-contained colony. The second expedition would be doomed to the same fate as the first, but it was not the lack of provisions that eventually made them flee the site. The second colonists felt severe threats from the Spanish, who were pretty annoyed to see Scotland still attempting to make Darien happen. With the news of the second expedition, the Spanish dispatched their forces in an effort to take down the colony once and for all. The siege of 1700 on the fort at New Edinburgh was a gruelling effort on the part of the Spanish to compel the Scots to give up their position. The Spanish succeeded, but after negotiations they allowed the Scottish to leave the colony peacefully. It was this Spanish attack that eventually swept out all hopes of the colony's success. Feelings of devastation spread rapidly. Not only had the venture lost lives, but also valuable ships, company provisions, resources, and the funding that was invested. The loss was felt by all, described as a serious affront to Scotland's national honour and credibility. The funds devoted to the scheme actually made up one-fifth of the national economy, causing economic disaster. The General Assembly of Scotland requested the proclamation for a day of national fast, which was approved by the Privy Council, who appointed August 29th as the solemn day of mourning for the nation's misfortunes. Unfortunately, this scheme and its ramifications have passed into the cloudy memories of history. Addresses to the king requested him to speak out about what happened, since pretty much everyone blamed him. King William simply responds with great regret at the outcome of infliction upon the Scottish, and his hopes to promote peace and prosperity for the future. It was here in the discussion following the disaster where we first see the proposal of a union between the two kingdoms. This union, proposed in 1700, could provide multitude of benefits to Scotland following their failed attempts in the New World. King William's proclamation ended with his endorsement for this rule. He earnestly recommended to the Lords consideration of a union as the best method of adjusting national rivalries in trade. This merging of powers would provide Scotland with the opportunity to utilise already existing English trade networks, one of the largest empires at this time. And considering their initial intentions in Darien stemmed from the opportunity to create these very networks for themselves, this would enable them to skip the hard work and reap the benefits of the English trade instead. And Article 15 of the Act of Union insisted that England repay Scotland, its company and investors, all it had lost in the fatal Darien scheme. This agreement therefore essentially amended the financial loss inflicted on Scotland in their venture, and this became known as the Price of Scotland. The economic position Scotland found themselves in after Darien disaster all but forced them into a position of weakness and an inability to refuse such an opportunity. There were, however, shortcomings of this union. Scotland's grievances of its treatment and inequality besides England under the Union of Crowns could only grow and magnify. It was of clear concern that England's interests would always supersede that of Scotland's under a single government. Undoubtedly, this path to union was incited by their inability to prove themselves in their maritime endeavour and failure to prosper on the global stage. And there we have it, the Darien Scheme, Scotland's ill-fated attempt at colonisation. Please drop a comment below to let me know what you think of this deep dive and check out some of my other videos in the suggestion here. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.